today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make pita bread, as I like to call it, the Middle Eastern tortilla. But I guarantee you, making it at home may take a little bit more time, yes, but it is so worth it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make a sponge for our dough. We're gonna get about one cup of warm water. You don't want it too cold, or else the yeast won't work. You don't want it too hot, or it will kill the yeast. And in the water goes. Then I'll add an instant dry yeast to my bowl, along with regular granulated sugar, some kosher salt, and about one cup of all-purpose flour. If you have bread flour, that works too. Now combine this mixture until it becomes nice and fluffy. When it's like this, you want to let it rest about 15 minutes. Let the yeast and the sugars make love to each other. And while you're at it, go ahead and read a magazine, an episode of your favorite TV show, and we'll be right back. All right, so it's been 15 minutes, and what you should have is a nice frothy mixture. Okay, so now you can totally do this in a mixer. However, I am not above hand mixing. Now, before I begin to start processing this dough, I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of olive oil, and then I'm gonna put in about nine ounces of flour. I like to keep it at nine ounces so that I don't go overboard. This is what 10 minutes of kneading looks like. Silky, smooth, and it bounces back to the touch. Before we let this rise, we wanna make sure we roll it into a ball so that it can rise evenly. Nice and smooth like a baby's bottom. Oil any bowl to fit the dough and let it rise in a warm area for about one hour. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you wanna wrap it up too. This is what my dough looked like after one hour of rising. Isn't it mesmerizing how it can double in size by just some yeast and sugar? I don't know, I think it's the child in me that finds this so cool. Divide this dough into eight cute little pieces. These will be our portion sizes for our pita breads. Now, once divided, continue to let these guys rise for another 30 minutes. This is creating that structure. After 30 minutes, remove the cape off your babies. They just won't stop growing. Roll your dough on a floured surface, and you want them to be about a quarter inch thick. Don't be too scared to thin them out more. It is super important that you let these pitas rest for about 10 minutes before cooking. Notice we just flattened them so they need time to expand in the middle to get that perfect pocket. Now heat up a large cast iron skillet, heat it with a light touch of olive oil, and place the pita bread right in the center. You wanna cook it for one minute on each side until it gives you that nice beautiful pocket that we're looking for. After about a couple of minutes, you should wait and... Oh look, there she goes, there she goes. Be careful, because there will be hot air shooting out of this thing. I could do this all day, it's so satisfying to see them fill up with air. And after you cook all of them, serve them up on a tray, dip them in your favorite condiments, share them with your family, or even stuff them to make sandwiches. Regardless what you do with them, these pitas came out so amazing and you can eat it even by itself. Now you know how to perfect the pita. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It really does help me out to produce more videos like this. If you learned something and found something very useful in this video, please let me know in the comments. I read through all of them. Pleasure teaching you how to make the pita. I'll see you guys in the next one.